Let's see. To generate the freeze frame effect, I will take a snapshot and then drag it onto the timeline where my playhead is located. Whoa, that's different. The default size of the snapshot does not match the character. Oh, well, I suppose it is not that painful to resize the snapshot. Okay, the next step is to cut the character track by click on the scissor icon. What? This is completely different from Create Studio Pro. Randy, Randy! What's wrong, Patrick? I can't figure out how to freeze frame the customizable 3D character. How did you create this video? It's actually pretty simple. Keep watching and I'll show you how. This is Randy. And Patrick! With a Create Studio 3 tutorial. As Patrick demonstrated, cutting the customizable character does not behave the same way as cutting older 3D characters. When you cut the 3D character template, it seems to reset the character to the starting pose. But all is not lost because with Create Studio 3, you can fix this so the character pose is established before and after the cut. Here I have two copies of the Tom Searching Action. I will hide the one on the bottom and cut the one on top in the middle. Immediately, you will see Tom goes to the starting pose. Click on the action title after the cut and you will see some toggle switches. Toggle on Disable Start. Tom is now looking through the magnifying glass. But when you move back a frame just before the cut, you notice Tom is again at the starting pose. So this time, click on the action title of the clip before the cut and toggle on Disable End. Now as I scrub through, you can see Tom connects seamlessly between the two clips. Let me now show the bottom track so that you can see that while Tom's action connects seamlessly before and after the cut, the action can be different from the original version. All right, let's remove the bottom track. So here's a huge tip. When you want to freeze frame the action, take the snapshot after making the cut, not before. As we know, cutting can change the character's pose slightly. Place your playhead where the cut is and highlight the track after the cut. Right mouse click and select Take Snapshot. Click and drag the snapshot that was saved to your project down to the timeline. Hey Randy, do you have any tips to correct the difference in size? I do. When I open the properties for the original Tom, I see the scale value of 150%. When I click on the snapshot, I see the scale value of 45%. After experimentation, changing the snapshot scale to 70% will match the size of the original Tom. Now by dragging the clip after the cut to the right and inserting the snapshot between the cuts, we have created the freeze frame. Tip. I recommend moving the snapshot onto the same track as the original and grouping the three clips. That way, you can resize and reposition if needed. Great tip, Randy. Are there any other issues our great viewers should be aware of? There are. If you have added animations to your character, cutting the track will delete the animation. Here I have the position animation on Tom's walking action. When I cut, see that animation? It just disappears. By the way, this is true in Create Studio Pro also. So I will use the same technique I used in Create Studio Pro to allow freeze framing even when animations are added. Let's use Command Z several times to return to Tom's walking animation. We are going to publish the character as a transparent video. Now, click on Publish, select WebM, and make sure to toggle on Transparent. When the publish is complete, delete the track and add a background. Click on the media icon and import the video you just published. Drag the video onto the timeline. Relocate and resize if needed. And move your playhead to where you want to do the freeze frame. Cut the video and right mouse click and select Take Snapshot. Drag the snapshot onto the timeline. You will notice the snapshot is not the same size, but that is because it does not fill the canvas.
Highlight the snapshot by clicking on its track, and notice it is smaller than the canvas. Click on one of those icons that will fill the video to the canvas. Now, if I hadn't changed size and location of the video, the snapshot would have been the same size and position as the character. But this is an easy fix. Record the scale, X position, and Y position of the video. Apply the same values to the snapshot. Now the characters are at the same size and position. So that is how you can use Freeze Frame and Create Studio 3 with or without animation. Wow, thanks. I feel like I can now Freeze Frame and Create Studio 3. Say, occasionally you give bonus tips. Do you have anything to share with those hardy viewers that are still watching? I do. I have determined how to size and locate the snapshot so that it perfectly fits the original. As I mentioned earlier, the default character scale is 150% and the matching snapshot scale is 70%. If we maintain that ratio, they will always match up. Hold on a minute. Are you going into geek mode and starting to do math? Don't you remember the last time you did that? Your audience fell asleep. Well, in this case, math will make it much easier to size the snapshot than trying to do it manually. I have created a table that keeps the current ratio between the character scale and the snapshot scale, and it goes by increments of 10%. If I make Tom 20% smaller, then the scale for the snapshot also needs to be 20% smaller, which is a value of 56%. That is the sound of my head exploding. Why don't you just put the table in the description and save humanity from listening to your math lesson? All right, fair enough. I will put the size table into the description. You all can thank me later. Hey, everybody, have a good day and happy creating.